Hello everyone, let's continue with the remaining tutorial of Arabidopsis whole transcriptome analysis. You can always quickly access the training material from here. First scroll down and click on the transcriptomics topic and then go to the bottom of the page and you can find our hands-on here. So far, you have analyzed the microRNA sequencing data as described here in this upper part of the figure. So you first started with the microRNA reads and then did some quality control using FastQC and MultiQC and then trim the low quality reads and clip for the adapters using TrimGalor and then you quantified the microRNAs using mirror deep 2 tool and then you continue with DESEC2 for differential gene expression analysis and then you selected the upregulated microRNAs out of them and then now the, the, the second part of the tutorial deals with the mRNA data analysis so you start with the mRNA reads here and then do a similar quality assessment as before and then this time we use Salmon for quantification and use DESEC2 for differential gene expression analysis now we will extract the down-regulated mRNAs and finally we will use microRNA target prediction program called target finder to find uh, put it to targets of upregulated microRNAs in downregulated mRNAs. That's the overview of the workflow. Now let's jump into the hands-on. If you haven't already, please import these four FASTQ files that correspond to the mRNA sequencing data into your history. You can either follow these instructions or you can watch the previous tutorial. If you're using the history from the previous tutorial, you should already have these FASTQ files in your history. I'm continuing my analysis uh, in the history from the previous tutorial. So I should have them in my history already. There they are. First things first, let's uh, add some tags to our datasets. Similar to what we have done with the microRNA dataset collections. For this collection, we give tags control and mRNA. For treated samples, we give tags PR and mRNA. Now let's go into the training material and directly jump into the mRNA data analysis. First, we do some quality control using FastQC tool. So just click on this. And then we now select uh, the collections from control mRNA datasets first. And then click on execute. While it is running, we can uh, rename the outputs so we just copy this uh, text from here and rename the FASTQC raw data set collection. Now we go back again and copy the text for web page and rename the collection of the web page. Our FASTQC jobs are complete. Now repeat the same steps for the PR treated samples. Now select the first Q file collection on PR treated mRNA and then uh, click on execute. Now go back and then we copy the text to rename the files again so but this time we should actually uh, 
change the control to we are treated and now we have to copy this and then uh, change the other collection name to the web page now we are done with both the first QC jobs and now we merge the collections of the first QC outputs we select the raw data collection from the first run and raw data collection from the second run and then click on execute now we can use multi QC to summarize this first QC results in one single report so select first QC here and now choose the data collections and then click the click on the merged collection uh, we should also rename the title of the report to mRNA initial quality check so I copy this and then paste it here and click on the execute the multi QC reports are ready now let's visualize them uh, here we see some general statistics uh, okay so if it's not loading just click again yeah here we see some general statistics on JC content um, millions how many millions of reads duplicates and if you scroll down we see the number of reads the absolute number of reads and the uh, sequence quality, quality histograms looks fine and the uh, per sequence quality scores also look fine and the uh, GC content is also fine and there are also not many duplicates but it seems there are some adapters so this Illumina Universal adapter present in the reads so they're present in all the samples but uh, not too many so it's less than 2% of the sequences contain the adapters and everything else is fine so let's go back try to answer these questions while you're doing your hands-on if you cannot you can always view the solution from here although there are adapters in our samples we are not going to click them the main reason for this is usage of the Solomon tool for quantification Solomon does simultaneous mapping and quantification does not do any base-to-base -base alignment but by mapping and quantification it infers which reads are originated from which transcripts as the KMS that corresponding to the adapters in the reads are not part of the reference transcript home, they are not counted hence uh, it's not mandatory to uh, clip the adapters when using Solomon. Let's now perform mRNA quantification by Solomon Quant tool. Uh, choose uh, the reference transcriptome from the history and then choose our transcriptome FASTA file and leave the KMOs as they are. And now we select our first Q file starts at collection. So we start with the control mRNA collection and then we say yes to validate mappings. And then in the end we have to select the file that contains mapping from transcript to genes, that is our GDF file, and then that's it I guess. Yeah, we have all the options set now. We go back and click execute. While Solomon is running, let's rename the outputs. First, copy this and uh, rename the corresponding f f collection. Then go back and rename the other output collection to add gene 
we are done. Now we have to repeat the, all the steps again for the VR treated sample. So click on Solomon Quant again and select the transcriptome first the file. Now this time we select the collection that belong to the BR treated mRNA samples. Uh, set the validate mappings to yes. Select the GTF file and uh, then click on the execute button. We have to rename the files again, so copy the names again, paste them, but this time we have to replace control with BR treated and we also have to do the same for the gene quantification files, so replace control with BR treated and add gene. So the solemn run will take some time to finish. Solomon produces two output files. The first one is quantification and the second one is gene quantification file. The quantification file summarizes the quantification at transcript level and the gene quantification file summarizes the quantification at gene level. If you look at one of the files, it contains these five columns. So the first one is the name, the name of the transcript or the name of the gene. The second one is the length or sequence length of the transcript. And the third one is the effective length that is calculated by Solomon. So it is kind of corrector length which takes a uh, sequence specific bias, GC bias and fragment length distribution into account. Uh, and then Solomon also uh, calculates uh, anomalized expression levels in TPMs which is transfers, transcripts for million. TPM calculation is based on the effective lens and Solomon also outputs the absolute number of reads per transcript in the last column. Now let's go back to the tutorial. So far we have done with the quantification of the mRNAs. Now we are ready to perform differential gene expression analysis using DESIP2. So first we need to give a factor name. So as we want to know the effects of the resinolide, we give it that name and the factor. And the factor level is what we are interested in first. So the Brazilian right is the factor level, the first factor level. And then we select the samples that are treated now. So go to the collections and select the, the gene quantification files. Right, control for the other factor level. And now we select the control collection. Then we tell DESEC2 that the values are coming from Solomon and we also give a annotation file so that it maps transcripts to genes. And then we click on execute. While DESIC2 is running, let's rename the outputs. So click on the edit attributes and change the name to DESIC2 plots mRNA. 
save it and then change the results file to D sector results mRNA save it let's inspect the DE sector plots the first plot you see here is a PCA plot as you can see the samples from the same experimental conditions are clustered together signifying high similarity between the biological replicates you can see the same trend in the heat maps too as you can see in red even for this subsample data set we found some differentially expressed mRNAs so let's uh, go back to the tutorial so all these plots, all the results from the ESEC2 are actually generated from subsample data. So before continuing further with the filtering, we get the results from the complete data sets. So copy this link and then uh, upload the data. So click on the paste, fetch, and then click start and we should rename this file to mrna d 2 results table so let's save it and then first we need to add all the tags that are related to the mrna data analysis so we add first uh, mRNA, BR and control. So mRNA, BR and control. should have been renamed already okay let's save it again now let's go back to the tutorial so now what we do is we filter for differentially expressed genes upregulated microRNAs and downregulated oh sorry upregulated mRNAs and downregulated mRNAs so for select the significantly differentially expressed mRNAs, we put C7 less than 0 0.05 and these, this contains significantly differentially expressed mRNAs. Now we run filter job again to select the upregulated. So now we have to select the this filtered list of genes so then C3 the column that contains the four changes with greater than one that is absolute twofold change and then minus one for so now we still select the list of differential expressed genes. Now if, uh, rename them to differentially expressed mRNAs first. The filtered one here. Yeah. And this one has uh, upregulated mRNAs. This one has down-regulated mRNAs. Save it. And 
now you can answer try to answer these questions by yourself so first we can look at how many genes are differentially expressed so this is like 4176 genes that are diff significantly differentially expressed and there are 778 upregulated and 328 downregulated genes. And uh, for, to answer this third question, what is the most significantly upregulated gene and what is its function? You have to copy this gene ID. and you can search for it and you probably find a result that is in their database so encodes for a P450 enzyme that catalyzes the production, reaction production of resinolide. So it seems this is a very relevant gene for our analysis and it's no surprise that this is a differentially, the most differentially expressed mRNA. So let's go back to our tutorial. Now we have all our downregulated microRNAs and upregulated mRNAs. Now it's time to find targets of the microRNAs that are in the downregulated mRNAs. So to do this we first need to extract the sequences of the microRNAs and mRNAs. We have to first extract the IDs of the genes and then extract the sequences. So we start with the microRNAs first. use the cut tool to cut out the first column which contains the gene ID from the upregulated M microRNAs first. So we cut the first column which is C1 and then click on execute. We rename this as upregulated microRNA IDs. Okay. The job has started and finished, so we can rename it, save it. If we inspect inspect the file. There are in total 16 mature microRNAs and microRNA star sequences IDs. So now we have to filter for sequences using filter faster tool. So once we select the mature microRNA sequences faster file and the second time we select the star microRNA sequences. So we start with the mature microRNA sequences was the file. So this file contains all the mature microRNAs. In the FASTA format you have the ID and then in the next line we have the sequence. So select the mature microRNA FASTA file and then for filtering we provide the list of IDs. And we say we have to select uh, upregulated microRNAs 
and then match IDs by default which is simply uh, rather than symbol followed by ID then we click on execute So there are 9 sequences out of 16 which are mature microRNAs and the remaining 7 are the micro -R -R from microRNA star sequences. So we we'll repeat the filtering step again but this time we select first the file from star sequences. So select star microRNA sequences first the file and keep the list of IDs as upregulated microRNAs and then click on execute. So this file should contain seven sequences once we got both the files, we concatenate them using the cat tool. Yeah, you see here, there are seven sequences that belong to microRNA star sequences and then nine mature microRNA sequences. So we concatenate them. So we first select the results of first filtering and then select the result of second filtering and then click execute and now we rename the output to upregulated microRNA sequences Here. Save. Now let's uh, inspect the file once. So we have a total 16 microRNA sequences, and now we go back and continue to obtaining the downregulated mRNAs. So now we do a similar step as before to extract the IDs so this step we, we rerun this step we select the first column but this time we select uh, down regulated mRNAs so now we are selecting the first column that is the IDs of the genes from the differentially expressed and downregulated mRNAs. So first rename it to downregulated mRNA IDs. Here, if we inspect it, so we have like 328 IDs, so 328 upregulated mRNAs in total. And this time it's not so straightforward, so we have all the sequences in the transcriptome for the file. The transcriptome for the file header is a little bit different than the microRNA FASTA files we've seen before. So this has a bit, bit complicated header, so it has uh, the transcript ID first and then we have a gene ID 
what we have to do now is uh, we have to select this gene ID from here but it's, it's not at the beginning of the line so we cannot directly use it uh, the default option to extract the sequences we need to trick to extract the sequences here we again use filter faster tool for extracting the sequences out of transcriptome faster file so but this time we have to uh, write a kind of tricky regular expression to extract them we will see how to do it so first we select the transcriptome faster file and then a list of ids and then the ids are down regulated mrna ids And then now, we, as we can see, the ID is not at the beginning of the uh, FASTA header, but it's somewhere in the middle. So we, to match it properly, we have to write so-called regular expression. So we have to match this, which is in the middle of the header. So if you look at the gene ID, start with the gene is equal to and there's ID of the gene and the ID always contain ET at the beginning and then followed by uh, seven alphanumeric characters so this is what we are going to use so the regular expression is gene is equal to a AT dot bracket seven so we copy this so what we are doing here is we want to select everything that is in these brackets. So now we are matching everything that starts with a T. And then has uh, anything the dot corresponds to anything any character seven times so 80 followed by seven characters this is why we are going to match so we have gene is equal to 80 followed by any seven characters Now we rename this data set to down-regulated mRNA sequences. Now we have already up-regulated microRNA sequences and down-regulated mRNA sequences so we can continue with microRNA target prediction with target finder tool. So here we select uh, up-regulated microRNA sequences and here the down-regulated mRNA target sequences. We, so in this case we are a bit lenient and then we say prediction score cutoff to set to 5.0. Then we select the tab delimited format which is more condensed format than the default output format and then we will see what we get it's ready now if you visualize the file the tar target finder found targets for some microRNAs but not all so you, you can see there are no results found for some of the microRNAs uh, you can also see some microRNAs have multiple targets 
For example, this first one has multiple targets. So the first column is a microRNA ID, the second column is this, the second column is the target ID. This is the position on the target where the microRNA is aligned to. And that's the strand. And, and the next column is the score. So as we put the score cutoff to five, everything below five will be there. And then we have the sequences of the microRNA and the mRNA. And the middle is the actual alignment between the microRNA and the target mRNA sequence. So you can uh, click on this uh, each of each each of these links to know more about these uh, target genes. We propose the following hypothesis from our results. So if we inhibit any of these genes, the plants can have higher resistance to draft condition. As a validation experiment, you can acquire the mutant seeds and wild type seeds and then grow them under two controlled conditions, one with water and the second one with drought stress. And then you analyze the plant weight after 33 days and you'll see if the mutant plants have uh, improved resistance to drought condition. So that's all uh, for this uh, tutorial and if you want to analyze more data we provide uh, an optional exercise so if you are done clear with this analysis you can analyze this data do it uh, now or on the last day of the workshop where you have more time that's all for now uh, please give us your feedback and thank you for your participation